Hello, welcome back to Jen Hannigans. It's Jen, and um, today is a pretty awesome day because it was my last appointment with my paniculectomy doctor. I am officially cleared, graduated, done. So I decided to honor this day. That's very exciting for me because it's been a long road. I thought that I would give you guys kind of the quick story of what my paniculectomy was like and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that, then stick around. If not, we have other great videos you can watch. Um, but I have a 15 year old son and when he was born, I had a C-section and it was at an army hospital. I won't mention which one. And the whole process of the birth was terrible. So, um, I ended up three days after he was born, I looked in the mirror and my belly was hanging terribly. And I was like, okay, it's fine. You know, it's just, it's, it's just what it is like after you have a baby. And so I waited patiently for years and years and years and it never like pulled back up and it was just always looked really strange to me. So when my second child, my, um, 12 year olds, so three years later, I go to my OBGYN at, for my first appointment. And, um, she tells me, you know, this doesn't look right. And she was asking me what happened. And she said that I don't know the full explanation, but somehow when, when the surgeon sewed me back up or initially did the surgery, um, at the, the, as the C-section, um, something was done incorrectly is what she told me. So I was like, okay, you know, is there anything that I can do about this? She said, short of having surgery, you're not gonna, there, there's nothing that can, we can do. And so I, of course, at that point in time, I never would have thought I would have had surgery. You know, I was just like, whatever, I'm just going to live with it. And then I ended up having, um, two more children, including my, or three more children, including my second daughter. So, and every single time, this belly would get worse and it would hang lower and it would cause a lot of irritation. And that was when I was bigger. Well, after my fourth baby, um, that I had birthed, I, um, that was when we started to lose weight, Hannah and myself. And from the very get go, as soon as I started, I mean, I probably lost, I'd only lost about 20 pounds and I knew this was going to be a bigger problem than I had initially thought. So I, um, I, we just kept losing weight. I did like target exercises trying to, you know, maybe make it better. It didn't make it better. And then on top of the stomach hanging, like the actual, like, uh, muscle fat, whatever, there was skin on top of it. And so it was just, um, it got to be really, really uncomfortable. And I would end up with rashes underneath and open sores. Um, and I, remember one day we were having a ladies conference and I had been on my feet for like three days straight getting things ready for it. And after that, I was down for probably the next few days after that, probably about three or four days because I had such a horrible rash underneath my belly where my skin was rubbing together. And so that's when I decided it was that weekend. I was like, I am going to get this done. I'm going to at least like look into it. So I talked to my OBGYN. She contacted, she referred me to, um, a plastic surgeon. Um, and at first I was a little leery about seeing a local cause we, we live in a small town area. And so I was a little like, should I go into one of the cities nearby and do it? Um, but I thought I would just give it a chance. I, uh, did some research and it turns out that my doctor, um, had had his own practice, uh, in a bigger area. And so I, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give this a try. So my first visit with him, um, he's a very abrupt, abrupt kind of guy. Like he tells it like it is, you know? And so, um, you know, he told me I really, he would have rather me been smaller before I had it done. And, uh, which was fine. I was, I appreciated his honesty, but he said that he did think that I needed to have it done and that, um, he would help me with the insurance part of it. And so that the next step was submitting it to our, the insurance. Now I will tell you, um, that I have seen, I, I, before I even had gone to the doctor, let me tell you my first tip before I went to the doctor, I had gotten on a paniculectomy support 
um, Facebook group and I had been watching the post and I had been kind of educating myself so that I knew what to ask when I got to the doctor. That was the, that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is we put in my insurance, um, and they refused it immediately. And which I have learned that most insurances will refuse it the first time. And you can get your doctor to advocate for you. You can um, have them send it back in. For me, I decided because I had been on this paniculectomy page, I'm like, I'm going to just write a letter and send in additional photos. And so I wrote a letter. I explained all of the ways. So if your insurance denies you, then I write a letter, explain all the ways that it affects your life. Talk about everything from using the bathroom, intimate time, um, activity, exercise. I mean, just everything. If you've ever had a situation where like your stomach has gotten caught in the drawer when you closed it, which has happened to me, um, you know, put that in there and then take all of the unflattering pictures. And, um, I mean, just all of them so that, there is a good understanding of what this is actually doing. So I got the news about 30 days later that I was approved for the second time they approved me. And so then it would just was, let's get this scheduled. So in April of 2021, oh man, it's only been a year. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So in April of 2021, I had it was April. Yeah, I think so. Sorry. This is a spur of the moment video, guys. This is just, I'm just throwing it all out there while it's in my head. 2021, April, I had my surgery. Okay. And so he removed four pounds. I remember that. He removed four pounds and four ounces. And um, it was a lot of skin and then some fat. And um, <clears throat> I remember that I did not stay in the hospital overnight. And generally, you don't. Uh, you go home. Um, so Brandon, I remember like leaving the hospital vaguely, like waking up and I remember climbing up the steps to my house cause I was thinking how I'm going to do that. I don't remember anything for like the next two days. It was extremely painful. Now I will say for a lot of people I've seen on the, on the paniculectomy pages that a lot of people are like, okay, this is, this is easier than a C-section for me. It was way worse than a C-section. I don't know why, but it was seriously excruciating pain. And then, um, my mom stayed with us thankfully because I needed both my mom and Brandon to help me use the bathroom, which was very humbling. And I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move, couldn't turn over nothing. And so, and I had about it, it's about 18, probably about 18 inches from hip bone to hip bone. Um, yeah, I would say about that. It, it's, there's a, there's a large, you know, scar across where he had taken it off and sewn the rest of it back together. Well, in my instant, there was instance, there was also a situation with the belly button. My doctor likes to save the belly button where a lot of doctors will either remove it or create a new one. He was able to kind of reposition it. So that was also, that was bandaged up and I had a huge bandage on the bottom. So I also had my favorite part, I had drains, okay? I had two drains. They came out of my upper um, pubic area. And just tell it like it is. Uh, it was, a, so they were both came out of the, the that area. And then um, the incision sites where the drains were coming out burned all the time. Um, they were constantly getting pulled. It would, um, some of them, one of them got pulled like, you know, probably about this much more out than what it should have been. And so I want to say, let me get this right. I want to say that I had the drains for four or five weeks. That's my guess. I don't, I'm, I, I have nothing that, um, like I have no way to like look that up. I don't know. Um, but they were the most miserable part. So as I started healing, the drains irritated me so badly. They hurt inside. And there was one that was like kind of snaked down my thigh and it would, um, have this excruciating burning pain, which I found out later that it was sitting on a nerve. And so I don't know if you ever experienced nerve pain, but that is the worst thing in the world. I have definitely more of, um, an empathy for people who live in like 
chronic pain because that's where I was. I couldn't do anything. Couldn't get out of my chair. I was very depressed. I was regretting what I was, what I had done. I was um, just, you know, in a lot of pain, not just from the, in the actual incision, but from the drains. And so I spent weeks like that where I was extremely, extremely uncomfortable. I'm going to be honest with you is one of the hardest. It is the hardest thing I have ever gone through physically in my body. Like I, cannot express to you how much hurt. I'm just being honest. And so, and I would never want to do that part of again. Now I will put this disclaimer before I continue. I am glad that I did this, that it was completely worth it, but it was a lot of pain. So I ended up getting my, okay, I'll tell you another thing. Emotionally, you have, I just got a paniculectomy. I did not get muscle repair. I did not get a tummy tuck. I did not get anything else done, but a, the removal of the the panis, the bottom part of your stomach that is hanging. That's all. Um, also, in order to be approved by insurance, it has to be hanging a certain amount, just so you know that. It has to be hanging a certain amount over, like, the pubic bone. Okay, so um, uh, mentally, you, I, I, I go in there and I know what I'm doing. Okay, like, I know that I'm not going to come out of there looking, like, fantastic. Like, it's not going to be, like, Jennifer Lopez or something, you know, like this is a medical procedure. It's not cosmetic and, um, it's not going to look like, you know, boom, boom, boom. You know, you're not going to be body banging. You're just getting the necessity done. And I, thankfully I prepared myself for that. But even then when you're in physical pain, and you're looking at the mirror and you would get extremely swollen. I will say I learned from the beginning that they say that swelling can last up to a year. I will vouch for that because it has been, uh, it is now January. So it's been, you know, whatever, eight months, whatever that may be. Um, and I still swell and, um, like it can be, you know, pretty bad if I've been out and about and stuff. So anyway, I was swollen. I was in pain. And I was looking at myself like, this is not that big of a difference for me to go through this kind of pain. And I thought that for weeks. I'm like, this, why did I do this to myself? You know, which of course, like common sense, I had to have it done. I was, you know, dealing with a lot of issues with the hanging skin. So it had to be done. But you're looking at it and you're dealing with the pain that you're in and you're like, why did I do this? And so it was probably months before I was like, okay, this is going to be all right. So slowly but surely, I watched as the swelling went down, my body began to take a new shape. Um, it does take a long time for your body to kind of shape to what it is supposed to be because there's a lot of swelling. Your body is still making all of that fluid and, and pushing it toward that area. And that area is not what it was anymore. It doesn't need all of that. So, um, eventually it was a few months, but as the pain subsided and I began to accept like you know, this is going to get better. Uh, I started to, you know, enjoy what I was able to do, like wearing different things. Um, anyway, going back though, the, when I got my drains removed, probably I want to say was it six weeks. Um, the drain removal process is supposed to be very painless is what everyone says. And so the first one he ripped out and I didn't even feel it. The second one that was sitting on the nerve and kind of like, whoo, just thinking about it. Um, he had ripped it out and I screamed and because it was terrible. So anyway, the paniculectomy scar, um, heals up really well and no issues with that. No infection, nothing. This belly button was a whole different story. So I would have been like out of the woods, clear, done probably by August with the paniculectomy because I mean, it just did great. Like it healed wonderfully, but the belly button actually did not connect the way that my doctor was hoping that it would have. So when he went in to like connect it to the umbilical stalk, I don't know. Um, he, it did not connect like it came loose. So after the initial surgery that I had, and I say initial because here comes another one. I had, um, it just kept opening up. It was getting infected. It was burning. Um, it would cause my whole stomach to hurt. Like when I would move, I mean, and you use your core for a lot of things. You don't think about it, but you use that torso area for a lot of things. And now I know. So I had to end up having another surgery for my belly button. I wish that I could remember what month that was because... I don't, but 
anyway, I had another surgery just a few months ago. It's not been too long. Um, I had another surgery to get my belly button fixed and it was, unfortunately he had to put me all the way under again, which I was hoping that it was going to be able to like, you know, a pretty easy situation, but, um, it wasn't. And so I ended up, um, I want to say maybe that was in August. I don't know. Even, Hannah would probably even know better than me. She's better at dates than I am. But I ended up having that done. And it, even after the surgery, it continued to open up and just be an issue. And so the doctor, at first he was looking at it when we first started. They saw that it was opening up again. He's like, I think we're going to have to go back in. And I'm like, oh, no. So then last minute he decides, no, nope, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait and see what it does. Because when I laid down... My, because I still have loose skin on my stomach. So when I lay down, the loose skin flattens and it just looks like there's a dark spot. But when I stand up, the loose skin kind of like hangs the way it's supposed to, I guess. And so now it actually looks like there's a belly button there. So he was concerned when I was laying down that it looked a certain way. But when I stood up, he's like, okay, well, it looks the way it's supposed to. So anyway, I had to go back every few weeks for that. And today, that brings me to today. That was, this was my last um, appointment and everything looks great. Now he still doesn't think it's connected the way that it should be, but he says he doesn't think it's going to be an issue. There's a possibility that it could form a cyst and he may have to go in and drain. Um, hopefully not, but I mean, who knows? But anyway, so that's it. We're done. I, um, I, I don't have to go to back to the doctor unless something, you know, something else bad happens. But, um, overall, like, it was very painful. It was very emotional. I missed out on the springtime, which was the spring and summer. I couldn't do anything. And so uh, we didn't do any hiking, barely got to do any camping because I just was not able to move the way that I normally would. So my advice to you is um, do not be dismayed when your insurance uh, turns you down. Number two, a lot of people go to other countries. Um, I think that Mexico is probably the most common I don't know. People seem to have really, really good, um, really good, uh, um, experiences there. And so that's an option. It's a lot cheaper than in America. And also, um, don't do it in the spring and summer. If you're an outside person, because you're going to have a little bit of, um, you're going to have a little bit of depression and like, you know, just a little down. If you, if you're, if your recovery is like mine, some people, they're like back to work the next week and they're great. But if you have the chance that your recovery could be a little rough, then I say, don't do it in a time where all your friends are out it, you know, hiking and camping and all of those things. That was really depressing. So I would say do it in the fall or the, the winter time. Um, if weather makes a difference where you're at, and then that way you're not missing out on those spring and summer activities because that was a hard part of it. I would say um, don't make snap judgments. Don't automatically like, I hate that I did this. This was a terrible idea because um, just give it time. Give it time. And I have um, not been able to really lose any weight uh, since my surgery and I don't know why. So my next my next step is to um, get my my panels checked, get everything checked out, make sure everything's you know going good. Um, the doctor says that it could just be that my body is going through a big change and it doesn't want to lose weight after um, going through something tr so traumatic as like literally having a body part removed. Like you know that's what it comes down to. So anyway, I hope I didn't leave anything out. If you have any questions, then please comment. I probably did leave some great information out. Um, I'll say, I'm just thinking of a couple of things I saw on the paniculectomy pages. A lot of people use like um, binders and shapers afterwards. I did not do that. Uh, normally that's for a tummy tuck, but uh, my doctor did give me a binder at one point, And I think that was more to hold, help hold the uh, belly button part in and not put so much strain there. Um, but I barely used that. I did buy a shaper, did not use it. Um, and so, I mean... If you have any questions, I really want to help. I don't have, I will not be posting in this video um, pictures of my belly before and after. They will only be clothed. You will not see them naked. I'm not going to be immodest. So if you um, want to, I'm going to, yeah, I've got a couple 
clothed pictures I can show in this video and I will. I do have pictures of it and I'm glad that I did. That's another thing I would say take pictures before you have your surgery, take pictures directly after your surgery and probably every week because then you know, hey, this is really changing and um and you may even want to take a picture like in the morning and at nighttime to show how much you swell or how much the changes cuz I could look pregnant by the end of the day. So anyway, I know this is jumbled and it was quick, but I hope that it helps somebody. And if you guys have any questions, then please put them down in the comments. Um, if you like this video, then like this video. Uh, what else? Subscribe because Hannah and I, we do a lot of weight loss and um, healthy lifestyle, um, you know, mental, physical, spiritual health, all of those things. And that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to end this now and unload my groceries. So thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Okay, so I wanted to give some kind of idea of what this looks like. Um, before, I could never wear a skirt with this kind of material because it just showed everything. So I used to be, I had my skin probably hanging down here and then um, all the way across right here. So the, um, I mean, it's not perfect. <laughs> you still have, here, I'm really pulled up so you can see. You still have um, this right here, which right after I had the surgery, um, this was huge. Like I was like, what is going on? But it has gone down quite a bit. So um, like I said, it's not gonna be perfect if this is all you're opting for. If you want something more than this, if you want it to be like, yes, then you're gonna have to do like more of a tummy tuck or whatever. But this is an outfit that I could not have worn um, comfortably before, so I am very happy that I got this done.